Well, Transport for London spoke to us earlier today regarding that latest incident. Mike Weston, TfL's director of buses, said this type of behaviour will not be tolerated on our network. Our passengers must be allowed to travel without fear or verbal or physical assault. We will provide the police with every assistance as they investigate this totally unacceptable incident. OK, so uh, joining me to discuss all this is London Assembly member Murad Qureshi and on the line we've got Arzu Morali, Head of Research at the Islamic Human Rights Commission. Um, welcome to the programme, both of you. Uh, Murad, um, it would be bad enough if these were isolated incidents, but the stats show they're not. Mm. They're both very vile video clips, um, but I actually think, uh, let's acknowledge some credit, the Met did... Uh, states uh, only uh, a few weeks back that there was a 60 percent odd increase in hate crime and that uh, they are already acknowledging that uh, one sex section of hate crime is that aimed at Muslims, Islamophobia. Um, so in some ways progress has been made in the acknowledgement of this. I'm also glad that TfL have made uh, put a very clear message and also I want to make sure there's a clear message coming from uh, the Greater London Authority, both the Assembly and the Mayoral Office. I do know that the, the Police and Crime Committee this week will be looking at uh, crime on the transport system and this will no doubt get highlighted. Mm. I mean, as you say, credit where it's due, mm. the very strong statements there coming mm. from uh, TfL and as you say, the police are releasing these figures. It would be better news if those figures were going down. What do you think the police are doing about it and are they doing enough? It's interesting, I mean, it's uh, how you explain the increase. Um, whether there's actually an increase in uh, more hate crime aimed at Muslims or whether people are more confident about reporting it. Mm. Uh, it strikes me with the two video clips that we've had a recent uh, spate of video clips of violence against black people uh, by the police in the, in the States. Mm. Now, I don't know if that's a reflection of what, what was the reality anyway or that they're increasing. I think we're in a similar kind of state of debate here. But nonetheless, I think the authorities are taking it on board uh, and TfL um, have, as well as the Met, and, and I think there is joint collaboration to be done there. And let's not forget, actually, also, the transport system is actually the safest part of London to be on. Mm. Um, it's actually where we have the most policing, at least, uh, and uh, people collectively can uh, police uh, spaces as well. Mm. Uh, there's also aspects in both these clips of fighting for space on buses, which is another issue on itself. Mm. Uh, it's not, uh, it doesn't surprise me that we've got someone with a pram competing with someone in a Zimmer frame. Mm. It's totally unacceptable to throw a Zimmer frame out of a bus, um, but there should be enough space in those buses to accommodate both. Mm. Arzu, let me bring you into the conversation now. Um, uh, do you have any sense of whether it is, um, uh, as, uh, as we've just been discussing, an increase in uh, reporting of uh, hate crime or an actual increase in the hate crime itself? I think the kind of discussion that's been had about, you know, the dubious aspect of reporting, is it just an increase in reporting, is the reason why for a long time we haven't used that methodology. And most long-term civil society organisations who've been working in this field for a good many years haven't either. It is very much up to the vagaries of, you know, do people feel motivated to report? And I can say for a fact from not just our research, but from so many others, that not just Muslims, but most minority groups really feel disinclined to report to the police. They fear either further discrimination by the police or they just don't feel anything's going to be done. This is why we have adopted a survey method for many years and we've been able to compare statistics now between 2010 and 2014. And so, yes, there is an increase. I can't give too many details because it's all embargoed, but we can see a very palpable sense of how not just the kind of attacks we've seen in social media because they're in a way quite ex extreme, but, you know, general sort of levels of hatred and prejudice are very much on the rise. And I think that's really the key thing here. The attacks we've seen are sort of portrayed as, you know, the isolated acts or the extreme acts of some random individuals. Really, this is not about what individuals do. Most of the time they're provoked by the environment that they're in and the environment that we're in right now is desperately anti-Muslim. It's going towards racisms of all sorts and shades. And we really need to be looking at this problem much more holistically. Yeah, um, Maura, uh, 
When we're talking about reporting it, uh, ours who said, you know, there's a reluctance mm. sometimes by ethnic minorities to go to the police. I think that's understandable. Um, would this problem be um, better dealt with in many cases if um, conductors hadn't been withdrawn from so many buses, if they weren't withdrawing the staff from um, tube station uh, offices? I mean, that traditionally is the way in which, you know, yeah. communities have kept, have kept kind of order and, and without resorting to the full-scale business of going to the police. No, indeed, uh, John, you, you make a very valid point. Um, the, the bus service has seen, in, in my lifetime, we've lost bus conductors and, and on the tubes we, we're losing people at the barriers, places where people would go as the first port of call to kind of sort things out mm. and stop it escalating as they clearly have done in, on both cases. The unfortunate context now is actually we're getting the police service that's going to be substantially cut up to about 8,000 and I think that will also affect the police responses to those crimes that are reported like the hate crimes that we've seen. Mm. Well, Arzu, when we talk about the general context here, I mean, on today's news, we've reported it. No doubt other news programmes will be reporting as well. David Cameron's uh, new move against extremism, saying that parents can take away the passports of 16 to 17 um, year olds. Uh, is your point that that kind of message coming from the top of society, when it hits uh, the other end, it hits the street level, it results in this kind of thing that we're seeing on the videos? Ultimately, I think that's really, sadly, the main point here. We, we kind of live in a myth that we live in a post-racial society. We, you know, I often hear people saying that, well, you know, the issue of racism has been solved and, you know, Islamophobia isn't even related to that. But sadly, that's not the case. We still live in a society where there are very deeply held prejudices, which essentially trickle down either from the very top you know, the echelons, whether it's government and, and the highest institutions, or through the kind of culture that's projected by parts of the media or substantial parts of the media, often not deliberately, things that are just ingrained and reproduce themselves. And so these are the things where there, have to, there has to be very serious introspection by those institutions. Oftentimes people will say, well, you're just being paranoid, you're being a left-wing Marxist, etc., etc., etc. No, you know, we have been in a situation in this country where issues around sexuality, issues around anti-Semitism to a certain extent, and also other forms of racism, including biological racism, have been understood to be affected in the same way, and measures have been taken to varying degrees of success, and I think some of those are being rolled back now. But we really do have to call, you know, hold leaders to account. We have to be saying, well, every time you say that, David Cameron, or even you know, members of the opposition parties, X, Y, or Z, you are creating these problems on the ground. At the end of the day, we all internalize these ideas. You know, they come in through many subtle forms and we end up all projecting these, these forms of hatred. Mm. Murad, uh, what do you reckon about this? Because, I mean, you know, it's pretty clear that when there's somebody on a bus using uh, ISIS as a reason for kicking off a, a a, mu a pregnant Muslim woman, they, they get those ideas from somewhere. I mean, well, the, yeah, David I mean, Cameron will be bringing forward a bill to, to bomb ISIS in Syria. Well, no doubt well, he'll I'm, be using I'm, that. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping uh, my, my parliamentary colleagues in, in the Labour Party will at least block that. Mm. But uh, yes, I think uh, it, it, the diatribe I heard on, on, on the first instance sounded straight off the, the pages of the Daily Mail, quite mm. honestly. And we shouldn't forget what role they had in encouraging fascism in this country in the 20s and 30s. Mm. So in some ways, I can see where they may be picking this up from. Um, I can't hold the, 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 the Prime Minister of the day to account, but I can certainly hold the Mayor of London to account. Mm. And it certainly is my intention to raise that issue. Mm. Uh, I've certainly done it in correspondence uh, with the Met, and I feel reasonably confident with their responses that, uh, that, that, that uh, we're getting some idea of the extent of it being acknowledged by those authorities and, and uh, uh, as a separate classification altogether. Mm. Um, but I really do think the real problem we're going to have in the foreseeable future is we have a police service which is actually pretty decimated. And uh, even when people are reporting it, the capacity there to, to actually respond to them isn't quite there. Mm. And, and I think that's another context we shouldn't forget, that austerity is going to have an impact in uh, our ability to deal with uh, these vile um, instances on, on buses well, tell us and a bit about that. You say you've been in correspondence with the, with the Met. Mm. Well, what sensation do you get off them about uh, how they're dealing with it? Is it simply that they're, they are mindful that they have to record this? Or is that moving all the way down the sort of chain of command to the point where they're actually after these people? I mean, you know, the, 
given the video evidence, they could hardly do anything less in this case, mm -hmm. but, but generally. Yeah. I mean, it's not just acknowledging the figures. I mean, it was uh, they who gave us the figures, certainly to, to, to me in correspondence, that we've seen uh, a 60-odd percent increase in such incidences of hate crime. Um, but uh, they have also internally trained a lot of their um, manpower to, 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 to actually recognise this and acknowledge this and, and respond. Mm. Um, and I think that fault uh, clearly has been put into uh, a response to these issues uh, e even before I came along and started asking questions, which I, I gives me some sense of reassurance. The reassurance I want to, to get uh, from government courts is that we've got a police service that can actually respond to these instances. And I think there, um, communities of all sorts should be able to get together. Mm. Uh, Arsley, do you, do you have the sense that the, there is some kind of sort of shift in attitude uh, uh, amongst the Met? Um, I'm afraid I, I'm not entirely uh, agreeing with uh, Murad here, although I do see that there have been changes and it's not to detract from those changes. But ultimately the police are working within a political culture that is simply not really pushing for that kind of recognition and acknowledgement of anti-Muslim racism. You know, we're still struggling nearly 20 years later late after the McPherson report to have things like the issue of perception and believing people who are victims of racist attacks, whatever type of racist motivation it is, really being understood and implemented. And if we're that far down the road from then, you know, it doesn't leave a lot of hope when you've actually got an aggressively anti-Muslim climate not really helping. You know, you're right, Murad, there is an issue about the decimation of police service and in terms of actually having physical manpower to deal with issues. But there has to be proper training. And I know we've heard in the last couple of days there's going to be some sort of training, etc. But this is a, a huge undertaking, and I can't see how really it's not going it's going to change that quickly. I don't see a kind of push towards that desire to change the culture. And that's really what, what is needed. Okay. Azu Morali and uh Murad Qureshi from the GLA, thanks very much for joining us. But I'm afraid we've